Hi, welcome back to the course. In the previous couple of videos, we have discussed a lot about the pagination, sorting, the JPA finder methods or the query methods. Now it's time to understand the JPQL queries. So why we need JPQL queries and how to write the JPQL queries in our Spring Boot application. So assume that there is a scenario, we cannot convert the SQL queries into the finder methods or the query methods. In such scenarios, we will write the JPQL queries. So in real world production grade applications, it is very common to write the JPQL queries. And in this video, we will try to create a simple JPQL queries to fulfill one of the requirement. Okay, so let's assume that we have an SQL query, which is select star from table name, which is TBL underscore employee and where the name is equal to Bushan or location is equal to India. So let's execute this query. I'm going to execute the query. We should record, we should get the two records. The location is India and we have the name Bushan. Okay, so assume that we have to write a JPQL queries for this SQL queries. By the way, we can easily convert this SQL query into the query method or the finder method. But the point here is to understand how to write the JPQL queries. So assume that somehow we cannot convert this query into the finder methods. And now we need to write a JPQL query for this SQL query. So let's see how we can write that. Let me go to my project and inside the employee repository i'm going to write a new method so this is going to return a list of employee and i'm going to create a method name which is get employees by name and location okay so here we don't need to follow any uh, conventions just like how we are following the conventions in finder methods or the query methods. We can give any name we want, but give a meaningful name. I intentionally give it as an and instead of or. So let's go ahead and complete this method. This is going to take two parameters. One is string, which is name. And the second parameter is the location. So when we are writing the JPQL queries, we have to annotate that method with the at query annotation at query. And inside this, we are going to write the JPQL query. So the JPQL query always start with where, not where we're going to start with from and the table name. But here the table name is mapped with the entity name, the entity class. So we're going to provide the entity class name in our case it's employee and where clause where the column name but here the column name is mapped with the field name so we will provide the field name inside our entity class which is name is equal to we are going to provide the variable name that is uh, prepended with the colon colon the variable name the variable name name the variable name should match with the parameter name in case if you are if you want to change the if you want to give a different name to the method name let's say for example i have given it as instead of name i have given it something abc then you have to annotate this with the at param annotation then you have to provide the variable name which is name okay so now this name variable is mapped with the or the value should be bind with the ABC value. But if you're providing a same variable name, what you have given in the uh, JPQL query, then you don't need to specify the at param annotation. So in this case, we are using the same variable name. That's why I'm eliminating the at param annotation. And we will write or the location, which is the field name is equal to location. That's it. So let me import the at query annotation. Okay, so now we have imported the at query annotation. Let me save this. So remember always the JPQL query starts from with the from, then the table name, 
and the where clause and we will provide the field name instead of the column names equal to then we will provide the variable name if the variable name is uh, same with the method argument uh, names then you don't have to provide the at param annotation if you are using a different variable name inside the method arguments then you have to provide the at param annotation with this now let's go to the service i'll quickly create a new method this is going to return list of employee get employees by name and location this will take two parameters name and location okay we already have this method let me change this to or let's save this inside our implementation we have to override this method we are going to call the repository method return employee repository get employees by name and location we will pass the name and location to the repository method next we are going to create a controller method inside this i'll just quickly take a copy of this this will be slash employees slash we are going to make use of the path variable because we are already using a lot of methods with the query params so let's use the path variable so name slash location get employees by name and location i think this should also be exists so let's use the r let me change this to add path variable annotation we are going to call the employee service method which is get employees by name and location not name and location it's a name or location and we will just pass the name and location okay with this now before that i would like to change this is okay this is a get mapping that's completely fine and let's go ahead and save this all right so now let's go and test our work let me open the postman and inside this i'll just quickly create a new request i will call the request name as read employees by name or location and we are going to make use of the environment variable which is url slash employees slash we will provide the name and location it's bushan slash location india when i click on this send we should get two records that is expected the name is bushan he is from india prashant he is from india awesome so this is how we can create the jpql queries and we should annotate that jpql jpql query with the at query annotation and we have to use the field names instead of the column names and we have to use the variable names that is prepended with the colon i hope you understand how to write the jpql queries so this is for the read queries or the select queries in the next video we will see how to write the jpql queries for the delete operation so i will see you in the next video